What's up guys? So a major announcement dropped from the Ark World team. Let's jump into it as the title of the video says, uh, Asia server number two is coming. So this announcement of the new server operation direction of Ark World. Hello, this is Ark World. Starting with the initial launch of Asia 1, server Ark World in September last year, until the opening of the first and second servers in the Americas, it's been 10 months since meeting all the users in Ark World. Arcworld did face some problems while operating the service, but whenever that happens, the Arcworld team was able to find solutions and overcome the obstacles wisely thanks to the trust of the users. Slowly, but step by step, we believe that we have been moving forward in the right direction. Currently, the Arcworld service has reached a very solid and stable state based on the experiences of the past 10 months. We have achieved distinguished success regarding, regardless of of the external market environment and arc world is getting more attention and love from the people uh, here's an article that they're highlighting global article link hence arc world has successfully launched two new servers in the americas and the influx of users is continued considering these recent achievements we found the number of users in the asia is relative stagnant with careful data analysis we found that Due to the nature of Arcworld, where land management is the basis for gameplay, the land lease rate of Asia 1 server has been maintained at close to 100% for more than three months. In the current situation, it believe that it would be difficult to expect additional new user inflows. The Arcworld team is reviewing several ways to open a new server while creating positive synergies with the existing server's economic balance and content activity. We will inform you of a specific plan and details as soon as possible. In addition, we would like to inform you that the Phase 3 Marine Content update and development of Arc Life Staking, which many people are looking forward to, are also being steadily prepared. Thanks to the users who support Arc World and always be with us. We have come this far. Once again, we express our deepest gratitude to all users. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so first up, a little bit of broken English because this is translated from Korean, obviously, so you're going to expect some, uh, you know, disparities and some words not just kind of flowing like it should. Uh, so some things, let's talk about today's talk about the external market conditions, and that is their, their phrase for saying the crypto market crash, like the crypto winter. All the token prices and everything kind of went down, the NFTs went down, the fad, uh, you know, dipped significantly so you know if you're in the crypto space you've seen that the uh, bitcoin i think is like hovering between 25 and like twenty seven thousand at this current time so just like significant decline in the crypto market but they've still got success out of this and so they are happy they, they give us information they say that they are very happy successful launch two american servers uh, so that's good. You know, they're happy and content with what America servers are right now. I know a lot of the players personally are unhappy with the server status, you know, of, of server one or server two or both of them. They don't think that it was a good idea to have two servers. And there's pros and cons of this, right? So what they're saying is on the Asian server, no new people are coming because there's no land. So even if they do come, even if a new player enters the game, they don't stick around because they can't get land. They can't rent land. They can't buy land. Like it, it's it's impossible for them to really play the game because the game is so centered on having land that if the entire server is filled up, a new player has nothing really to do. They can't get past you know the the basic quest and that's it. And they quit, leave. So for that reason, it sounds like they are going to open the second server. So the second server will have a lot of land available. And I don't expect them, based on what they said here in the article, to really do a land sale, like that, like to sell all the lands. I expect the second server to be kind of like a lot of rentals. So a lot of XL Games owned land. And if they do do a land sale, I expect it to be very small, similar how they did in America server number two, where they sold like 1,300 lands. And then they did events to give out more lands to like highlight that server. So... That's what they've been doing. They've been doing these these cash shop events to essentially like sell land in these these RNG boxes. 
but it also hypes up the server. People are excited. They're happy about playing on that server. They're like, cool, land. The dividends are crazy on the first couple months on those servers for the, uh, you know, the, the people that minted early on. So there's a lot of hype for server two on America. Server one has kind of fallen off the wayside a little bit. There's a decent amount of population still. Obviously, there's still conflict that's happening because it's politics and drama does occur and there's limited resources. So server one does have a little bit of conflict and PVP going on, but nothing compared to server two from what I understand. Server two has just lots of different guilds vying for position and conflict a lot. I mean, obviously, I'm not playing on server two, so I cannot personally verify all this stuff. Someone will say this and someone will say that. They'll, they'll both contradict each other. Uh, someone will say there's a lot of PV, PVP. Someone will say there's not much PVP. You know, everyone's experiences are completely different based on their time zone, where you play, who's your allies, who's your friends, and so forth. So with them saying they're examining the economic balance, we don't know. Like their original plan is second server, third server, fourth server, all to be linked together via one auction house. So that is a big deal. But they're looking at different possibilities here. So maybe they're not going to link the auction house right away. Or maybe they're going to start with an independent auction house and then merge it together, you know, two months down, three months down. They could also be looking at ways to introduce land. Are they going to just do a land sale right away? Are they going to do a big mint, a small mint? Are they going to do land events in game like they've been doing on server two? Are they going to make it like a double drop rate server for a while and give special events like that? Because there's a lot of different like little tweaks that they could do to the server to either speed up progression to try and get it to where Asia server one is or to, you know, put it into the game economy because the entire economy is essentially global. BSLT is a global currency. Um, Archeum is sort of a global currency right now because now you can create items on a server one Asia and get them to tier six, which is going to take you a lot of time, money, and effort. Archeum also, lots and lots of Archeum. Most of that money that is needed is, is an Archeum value. And then you can trade, sell that tier six weapon via an NFT to any other server. So essentially now Archeum and labor is all a universal currency and they all kind of share different properties so you know it could be smarter to build up a character on server one asia and then transfer it all over to server two north america or vice versa like there's going to be different potential opportunities there and if they do link the servers then that means also that server two asia essentially does not have an arena because they're going to be fighting against server one Asia and all those players are like 20,000 gear score. Well, the top players are 20,000 gear score. Uh, I believe like there's one or two people that it's like a 23,000 gear score, but yeah, a lot of players are really, really high. And also they're not going to have a gear score rankings. Cause once again, the top 100 players on the Asian server are like 17,000 or 18,000. Like they're very, very high. And on a fresh start server, you start off and you're at zero and then you get up to like, you know, 12,000. And it will be easier for them to progress and level because the blue Archeum cores are really cheap. The purple Archeum cores are really cheap, uh, but they still got to put that time and effort into to buying Archeum and to progressing the characters if they so choose to level, right? If the whole purpose of server two is just to kind of give land for the players, uh, you also could see a bunch of investors come in and just gobble up the land. That's why I think that they don't want to give out as many nfts on that server and just kind of make it a rental server because there is a cap right you can you can only have three xl games lands so another option that they could have done is they could have reduced it to where you only have one xl games land um, but i think they like the income you know like they, they like having the income from three xl games lands they like people having you know multiple accounts to have three on this account three on that account three in this account and so forth um so we'll see what happens here. More land also means that labor is going to be less because more land will be producing more labor, which should bring down the labor prices on the Asian server. This also potentially means that Archeum prices could go down. Again, if these are linked, if these are linked auction houses, then this new land will 
decrease uh, Archeon prices and also decrease labor prices on the Asian server, in my opinion. Uh, if the servers are not linked and eventually going to be linked in the future, um, that will be a very interesting situation that we'll have to talk about when we get there. But as of now, I think that we have to assume that it's all going to be linked together in one auction house for the Asian server, which also means the arenas are linked together. So really, this is just a server for kind of new players, right? And people that want to have land, more farming activities. And new players will benefit, I think, from a server where there's no whales on it. Right? So it's easier to go farm rifts, it's easier to play the game if you have no one like dominating the server. You don't have to worry about a 20,000 gear score. Granted, people can transfer their characters via those NFTs over to the new server. So if someone really wanted to, they can go and dominate the server and we might see that. We kind of saw that a little bit with server two. We had one person transfer over all full two, tier six gear. So transferred over like 22,000 gear score and is playing on server two is he dominating server two i'm not sure again we don't play on server two so we don't really know but uh, from what i understand i think he's just kind of more inactive and doesn't you know really factor in much but if someone really wanted to they definitely could go and dominate and kind of control and have their own almost private server within a their asia server two and be like the big bad boss of that server and right now it really doesn't do anything right but if the auction house is connected and then our next content is like Kraken or Leviathan, so these big bosses that are, are massive and it's supposed to be contested. If server two is uncontested, they have a free farm on this and then they can take that loot and then sell it to the other server. That's going to devalue the content just a little bit. And it, depending on how many times you can farm that big boss in a day if the boss is farmable more times like you know like how the rifts are currently then that's going to significantly devalue those content because unless someone else comes over to fight these guys there's going to be no competition and you're going to need some strong players too so the player base will slowly get thinner and thinner on each server because these players are out for money, right? If they're here hunting money and hunting loot drops, it's smarter to go to an empty server, even if it's not in your region, but if there's no competition there, uh, it's just smarter to go there and get the drops and then sell them for the profit because you're selling them, again, to kind of like the global economy. Uh, you're able to sell directly if it's linked auction house to the, the Asian server one. So people on there will want whatever drop comes out of the Leviathan or the Kraken. But in theory too, you're also selling to North America and, and South America because those materials are most likely going to be needed for tier seven weapons and armor, which can't be turned into NFTs. You know, like we assume that every grade above tier six will become an NFT because Tier six is already an NFT. So all these materials and all these items is essentially a global resource. And if you can get it a lot easier on one server than another, it just simply makes sense to go to the server to get it easier than the other ones. Like, it, like it, there's no reason to fight over these things when you can just go get your own one for free. So that's my thoughts on this. We'll have to see how it shakes out. We'll have to see when they give us like a release date, some information on this. I'm really curious about what changes they might add, if there's any temporary buffs, if they do do a isolated auction house. Personally, if they do do a fresh start isolated auction house where there's no economy whatsoever, I will play the first like month on that server and I'll play it hard because in the beginning, you can make a lot of money. And then again, you can transfer that stuff over to your main account. So it's just trying to value what is the best thing to do for you personally. Uh, if you're trying to progress your character, obviously making more money is a good thing because if you make more money, then you can use that money to progress your character. So you don't have to even be like, well, I'm just playing over there for the money. Well, yeah, you can put playing for the money on that new server, but if you're transferring and sending it to your main account and building up your main account, you're still investing in your character you're still investing into the game in the future and it just depends like it's like it always comes back to do you think the game will be around in five years or ten years 
or are you here just for a quick cash out trying to make you know hundreds of bucks or two you know thousands of bucks and think the game is going to die in six months or so like it depends do you have a longer time horizon do you want to be playing this game for five years or not and with me i've always said that i expect to play this game for like five years like this is my game my main game for the next like five years hopefully longer but we'll see you know like we'll see i played arc age for roughly around that time you know obviously it was hardcore for probably the first three-ish years and then a little bit well way less hardcore after those three years definitely on and off um but yeah like i do expect to play this game for a long long time and that's why i'm happily investing in my character uh the price of bslt doesn't really matter to me it goes up goes down it doesn't matter uh, if it goes down that means i can buy more and invest more in my character if it goes up then i just wait for it to go down like things like that like it really doesn't matter too much if you think that the game will be successful in the long run and i do think the game will be very successful in the long run i'm very excited for the ocean content cannot wait for that uh, you know, hopefully they, they do it correctly. Hopefully the ocean content is incredibly difficult and hard PVE, right? Like the PVE needs to be difficult. If the PVE is easy, then it's like, what's the point? What's the point of gearing up your character right now? That's kind of where we're at. People are like, well, well, I don't need to gear up my character because I can do all the content with, you know, 13,000 gear score, 14,000 gear score, or even 12,000 gear score. So we, we need to push the limits on the uh, on the higher level characters. We need characters to be at 25,000 and 30,000 gear score for some of the high, high end contents. Like that's my thoughts on this. Like we need to have ancestral level 50 Leviathan or something like that, like crazy high levels where you need to be really, really strong to fight this. You need to have really, really strong boats and really strong cannons to fight these guys. Like you need to have progression in your characters. It needs to force progression into your characters the pve needs to be difficult even like the sea bug the monsters in the wild that are just little grunts like they need to be able to kill you and they need to be threatening if they are not threatening what's the point of them like they did a good job with the early game here all the monsters can pretty much kill you the ancestral monsters right now are threatening as well like so they've done a good job i have High hopes that they keep this up and they keep doing a good job making the monsters and enemies threatening and then that the rewards can actually be rewarding because it's difficult to kill, difficult to earn, which also means it's difficult to bot and difficult to like, you know, cheat the system. So this is the rant on server two. Let me know what you think. I know many, many people are very angry about server two. This definitely should decrease the server one land prices, I think, also. So we'll see here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, there's a lot of chat that's angry. But look at these emojis. Claps. 32. We got rockets. I clicked the rocket right there. We got another rocket at 3. Uh, hearts at 13. Uh, there's only one vomit and six down votes here. Like, this is pretty positive on the emoji front here. So, yeah, based on global chat, though, or general chats, everyone hates it but in these emojis man people are like very happy on this so it's very interesting um of course there are a lot of people that don't even post on discord uh and are very silent so the chatters don't necessarily represent the total sentiment of the community you know emojis show a different sign here anyway i'll talk to you guys later Thanks for watching. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Love to hear from you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.